Welcome to the Golden Age of Radio. You're listening to the new old time radio show. Classic, contemporary, fun. This podcast is brought to you by CurtainsMysteryTheater.com. If you would like to help ensure future programming, please come visit us at CurtainsMysteryTheater.com and click on our donate button. That's theater with an R E. Thank you for your support. General Electric marches on. Out from the laboratories, out from the drafting rooms, out from the manufacturing plants, off the assembly lines, and, after constant testing and inspection, into trucks and freight cars, over the rails and the highways. There is rushing towards your door the complete line of new General Electric refrigerators, powered by the famous General Electric thrift unit and bringing you real news of new values. Lights out, everybody. It's a great night, isn't it? Yes. It's good to be alive in the spring. (laughs) It's good to be alive at any time. The night air is so soft. Yes. Like your lips. (laughs) Darling. I wish we didn't have to go there. So do I. There'll be a house full of loudspeakers trying to out-talk each other. Can't we sort of just forget to go? Not a chance. If I didn't show up to one of Mrs. Hinkle's parties and she got wise to it, tomorrow morning I'd be reading the want ads and worrying about where I'd get my money to meet the next payment on that engagement ring. (laughs) Silly. Silly is right. That fat old tub owns stock in just about every business in this town. You go to her parties when you're invited, or else. Seems a pity to waste on such a glorious night. If it were just a plain party, it wouldn't be so bad. But one of Mrs. Hinkle's... Are they really as bad as all that, Jim? Worse. The woman's got a party complex. She thinks she's the daring type. But actually, the last time she had an original idea was just this side of the Civil War. She's built like a battleship. And the only thing she does outside of clipping coupons off her bonds is think up screwy ideas for screwier parties. Wait till you see her. I'm looking forward to it. What about Mr. Hinkle? Oh, he makes a fit partner for her. He's as small as she's big, and he's about as party cuckoo as she is. Yeah, and on top of it, it, he's one of these practical jokers. No. It's a fact. Palm ticklers and itch powder and water squirting out of a flower's buttonhole and all that kid stuff. I tell you, the pair of them are enough to make a person sick. (laughs) Have we much farther to go, Jimmy? No. Unfortunately, it's just around the block. I sure wonder what screwy idea they've got cooked up for tonight. You mean all of their parties are different? Yeah, different and yet the same. The last one I went to, she had the house fixed up like the inside of a barn. Cows and chickens wandering around the parlor and all that sort of stuff. Oh, you're fooling. So help me. After the liquor started circulating, somebody found that one of the hens had laid an egg and he popped someone with it and the fun began. They threw everything around but the cow. And if it wasn't for the fact that the Hinkles have a bank account big enough to choke an ostrich farm, the whole shebang would have landed in the Huskow. Well, oh my goodness, Jimmy. I don't think I want to go to their party. If that's the way that they are. Uh, no, don't worry. I understand that tonight the Hinkles are having just a quiet evening at home. I hope. I don't like the way you said that I hope. Jimmy, do you hear what I hear? 
Yep, that's their place, all right. A nice, quiet evening at home, eh? You should hear the hinkles when they really get going. Do we really have to go there? Do we really, Jimmy? Ours is not to question why. All we can do is to go there and hope to heck that she isn't throwing a circus party with a couple of lions running loose. <laughs> I'll do more than hope, Jim. I'll pray. Okay. And while you're praying, pray that Mr. Hinkle doesn't pull any of his pet practical jokes on us. His idea of good, clean fun is to wire up a chair with electricity and then shock the back teeth out of anyone who sits down in it. Oh, oh stay close to me, Jimmy. Stay close. He's here. He's here. I thought after the last party, they would never invite him again. Quiet, everybody. Quiet, please. Quiet. It's Mr. Hinkle. Well, he's going to give a speech. I hope not. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to that queen of party makers, none other than my own dear wife. <laughs> thank you, dear friends. Thank you. It does my heart good to know that you appreciate these little gatherings, which have come to mean so much, I'm sure, to the social life of our community. But enough of that. As you all know, I pride myself, if I might use the word, on the originality of my little parties. Well, as you know, we've done just about everything at these parties. <laughs> that is to say, everything really clever. So tonight, I simply racked my brains for something that just hadn't been done before. And I'm sure when I tell you what it's all about, you'll agree with me that it's going to be quite a treat indeed. I don't like in the fact, look in that woman's eye, so Ellen. Oh, don't be yeah, silly. She's not as terrible as you said she'd folks. be. Have I bet she's going to say that we're going to play post office or, or puss in the corner. That's what you think, darling. That's what tonight. you think. It'll thrill you. I simply know it will. So it is with the greatest of pleasure that I announce the pied de resistance of our evening. Entertainment, which I'm sure will thrill all of you. Not other than an actual ghost seance. Ghost seance? I don't What's like you talking about? Quiet, Quiet, please. Quiet, please. Mrs. Hinkle has something more to say. Quiet. Thank you, Mr. Hinkle. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you all please, come into the next room and the seance will begin. Hurry now. <laughs> The spirit said it must not be kept waiting. In here, please, in here. Oh, 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 I'm afraid of spirits. What kind of spirits does she mean? Whiskey or gin? <laughs> I hope the room won't be too dark. Oh, Jimmy, I don't like this. Oh, don't worry. We'll just sit around in a circle and hold hands. <laughs> I won't mind that part of it. A, a ghost seance? Is that this woman's idea of fun? It's all right, dear. I think we can sneak out and she'll never know what happened to us. The old battle axe. Shh. What? Here come the Hinkles. Oh my gosh. Ah, uh, here you are, Jimmy. Now you and your young lady get right in with the rest. Right in. The spirits and the ghosts are waiting. Now, everyone take a chair around the table. Quickly, please, quickly. Sit here, dear. All right. Now, now everyone join hands. Everyone join hands. Tinkle, turn off the lights. Oh, I'm scared. Mama, where are you? Here come the spirits with a hey, hey. Mr. Tinkle, <laughs> did you hear me? Turn out the lights. Right, my dear. Jimmy, I wish I was home. Say, this is nothing. You ought to see the Hinkle's really bright ideas. I'll bet they're the ones who started the San Francisco earthquake. Ladies and gentlemen, please, please. We cannot expect to have the proper uh, uh, contact with the spirits unless we are silent. Thank you, Mr. Hinkle. Those are my sentiments exactly. The spirits. Ah, the spirits. Where are the spirits? I'm the spirit of 1776. <laughs> now, please, my friends, please. This is a serious affair. 
Mrs. Hinkle is trying to awaken the spirits of the departed. I am the spirit of spring. <laughs> Mr. Hinkle, you must do something. We must have quiet. How can I contact the spirits of our forefathers? Here, ladies and gentlemen, quiet, please. Quiet. Jim, how long is this going to go on? Let's try to sneak out now. I can't, Ellen. I just can't. If Old Eagle Eye found out... All oh, this silly nonsense? Sitting in the dark and holding hands? Is Wyatt, it... Wait! Please. No more whispering, if you please. If any of you think that this seance which I am about to conduct is not perfectly serious, I assure you emphatically that it is. You see, last week, I went to see one of the greatest mediums in existence, and she told me I myself was a medium. I myself am psychic. Isn't that true, Mr. Hinkle? Yeah, absolutely, my dear. He said you were positively psychic. Now, hold tightly to your neighbor's hands, and I will go into a trance. Here I go. She's been in a trance all her <laughs> life. Quiet, let's see what she does. I am now in a trance. I am now the voice of the world beyond. Of all the scummy parties, the voice of the other world. <laughs> she sounds like the voice of a fatty degeneration. I bring you my spirit control. Listen to him. Knock, knock. Who's there? Quiet, please. Oh, spirit of the other world, speak and bring us wisdom. Well, all the nonsense. This woman isn't a medium, is she, Jimmy? She's medium crazy. That's what she is. Jimmy? Uh-huh? Why did you stand up? What? It's so dark, but I see you standing by me. Why don't you sit down? But... But I am sitting down. Then what? Ellen, in heaven's name, what? What happened? Turn on the lights, someone. Lights and the lights, Mr. Hinkle. Turn on the lights. Yes, yes. In heaven's name, turn on the lights. I I can't find the switch. Oh, wait, there, there it is. I've got it. Oh, girl, look at that girl. What's the matter? Who screamed? What's going on here? Oh. She fainted. Yeah, get some water, quick. Somebody. Uh, Ellen, Ellen, open your eyes. What frightened you? Look, look at the way she's got her hands to her throat. Take her hands away. Yes, yes, she's choking herself. Uh, yeah, sure. I, I don't know why. Oh, Ellen! Blood. Her hands are covered with blood. Get a doctor, someone. Get a doctor. No, no, I see it clearly. It's just a scratch. Just a scratch. Jimmy? See? She's coming too. She's all right. Just a scratch on her throat. Just a scratch. A scratch? You fool. Look! It's... It's teeth marks. Jeffries! Jeffries! Yes, Mrs. Hinkle. Jeffries. Are they all gone? Yes, madam. All. Then run along. Run along and close up. Yes, ma'am. Most deplorable thing that ever happened to me. Sam? Sam, are you falling asleep down here? Uh, oh, 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 get up out of that chair and let's go upstairs and go to bed. Most disgusting party I ever had the misfortune to be concerned with. It, it did turn out badly, didn't it? Not at all. It would have been most entertaining, but for that disgusting little person fainting that way. But, but, but her throat. Now, don't start that again, Mr. Hinkle. It was nothing at all, a mere scratch. Teeth marks, indeed. But they were plain. As now, the... don't start arguing, Samuel Hinkle. No, no, my dear. She got all nervous and excited there in the dark, and she... She scratched herself, that's all, breaking up a perfectly good evening with her hysteria. Well, come, come. 
Let's go upstairs. Yes, my dear. Screaming and carrying on like that. Absolutely disgusting. Yes, my dear. Ruining a perfectly good party that way. And that Jimmy person persisting in wanting the police in when one could see it was nothing but a scratch. Teeth marks in the teeth. Oh, yes, my dear. Oh, I'll fix that young man's goose tomorrow morning. I will. Police in my house. I'll teach him. He'll be walking the streets when I get through with him. And perfectly right, my dear. And I spent so much time thinking of the idea of the party. And we had such clever stunts planned, didn't we? Oh, yes, my dear. What will people think of me? Such a disgusting exhibition. Well, Samuel, open the door. Open the door. Yes, my dear. Sleep. That's what I need. Sleep to forget the entire atrocious affair. Well, turn on the lights. Turn on the lights. Yes, my dear. All those clever little things we figured out. The luminous paint to shine in the dark. And you're getting under the table and pulling their legs and... Ah! Sam! Yes, my dear. And, and my chair by the window. My goodness. Do, do you see her too, Samuel? Yes, yes, of course. Who, who is she? I, I never saw her before in my life. Speak to her, Mr. Hinkle. Find out who in the world she is. Well, I... Uh, oh, you, I, you, you mouse, you... Old woman, who are you? What are you doing in my bedroom? Eh? She, she can't hear you, my dear. She, she wants you to come closer. Of all the nerve, filthy old hag. Get out of my chair. What are you doing here? Who are you? You ask who I am? Yeah, you heard me. Who are you? How did you get up here? Hinkle. Call the police. Yes, my dear. Hinkle, wait. Uh -huh. Come closer, the both of you. Get out of my house. Out, I said. Hinkle, what are you standing there for? Do something. Uh, 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 yes, my dear. Both of you. Closer. I'll fix you. I'll fix you. Jeffries. Jeffries, come here, Jeffries! Yes, Mrs. Hinkle. Uh, what is it, Mrs. Hinkle? Is there any trouble? Jeffries, come in here. Yes, Mrs. Hinkle. Jeffries, call the police. Ma'am? My husband, for some reason of his own, apparently is fascinated by that horrible old hag, but you certainly aren't. Call the police. I... I'm very sorry, Mrs. Hinkle. I'm afraid I don't quite understand. The police! The police! Call the police! Don't you understand simple English either? Call the police! But, but begging your pardon, madam, why? Legal entry? Breaking? Disorderly conduct? I don't know exactly what reason. There must be some law in this community that prevents a woman from just simply usurping someone else's home. My dear. Oh, you shut up. Jeffries, do you hear me? Don't stand there, call the police. I want her thrown into jail, sitting there, smirking at me. Call the police. But, but madam, who are you talking about? In the chair, by the window. But there's no one there. No one there? What are you? Oh! I was trying to tell you, my dear. She, she, she just went. Went? Uh, just like you turn out a light. It's so late, madam. May I retire? Get out! Get out! Thank you, madam. Samuel? Yes, my dear? Where did she go? I wasn't watching. Where did she go? I, I told you, my dear, the, 
Answer my question. Where did she go? I, I don't know. But she must have gone somewhere. You were watching her. I wasn't. Tell me, where did she go? She, she just disappeared. <gasps> you fool. People don't just disappear. I know. She sneaked downstairs. My sister, she sneaked downstairs while I was talking to steal us out of house and home. Hinkle! Yes, my dear. Go downstairs. See if she's down there. Quickly! Yes, but... Quickly, I say. Go down there and... Ah! What? There she is. She's... She's sitting in front of the door now. You do see her, don't you, Hinkle? Yes. Yes, I see her. Samuel. Huh? I, I think I can see the back of the chair right through her. Yes. Sit down, my friends. We have a long time ahead of us. <laughs> Sam? Yes. So late. Yeah, I slept a little. Not me. Her sitting there, staring, staring. I got so tired. I've been thinking all this time. Thinking what? Thinking of what she wants of us. She hasn't said a word for hours, has she? She doesn't have to speak, Sam. I know. Know what? She wants to kill us both. <gasps> I know. The dead can't kill. While you were dozing, I went close to her. I thought maybe, maybe somehow I could get by. Through to the door. Well? She kept looking at me as I came closer. Yes. And suddenly when I got very close, I couldn't move anymore. Well, how can that be? That's the way it was. If we yell for Jeffries. You were always a fool, Sam. Try. Try to yell. <coughs> <coughs> Uh, I, I can't somehow. I, I never was afraid of anything before. You have always been afraid. What's she waiting for? What is it? Staring. Staring. Why doesn't she speak again? No, no. Uh, oh, when it's daylight, things will be different then. Uh, she'll go away. Uh, a dead thing like that can't live in the daylight. But it's hours until day yet. Hours. Sam, I can't stand it anymore. Go up to her. Talk to her. You talk to her. No, no. You. Sam, do as I say. I can't talk to her. Not I. Somehow, I've got a feeling that if I do talk to her again, well, never mind that now. Go up to her. Speak to her. Maybe, maybe you can find out why she keeps staring. Staring at me. Why me? Why me? Uh, I'd rather not. Sam, do as I say. Yes, my dear. Yes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, please. Come closer. We have much to talk about. You and I. It's, it's not me that wants to talk, please. My, my wife. She is afraid to talk to me. Well, she's afraid that something will happen. And so it will. She, she asked me to ask you why, why you keep staring at her. Did you ever see her blood? Huh? She has so much of it. 
swimming in her veins, and I have none. You'll excuse me, I don't understand. There are some of us who could go back to living if we had blood. She wants to know just what it is you want. Did you ever walk along a quiet street and suddenly think there was somebody close behind you? Did you ever sit alone in a room just at dark and suddenly think that there behind the chair, if you but turned around, there was someone standing? Someone you didn't dare look at? She, she wants to know just what you want. You, you want your life, don't you, simple man? Answer me. You want this thing you call your life? I, I want to live. Oh, yes, sure. And so do I. And only through blood. Red blood can I have life. The life I want. Well, 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 what can I do? Uh, I mean, I don't understand. Really, I don't. Death or life? What do you want, little man? Which? Life. Then listen to me. Put your ear close to me. Here's your choice. Your life or hers. <gasps> you believe I'm not of this world, you know? Yes, yes. Well, I've always believed. Then believe I'll take that miserable little life of yours unless you do just as I say. I don't want to die. Those pills for sleeping that your wife takes often, they're on the table by the bed. Well? Fix them. A quick death. Quicker than I would give her. You must give them to her. <gasps> you fool! She's kept you under all these years. With her, you've been a, a man, and yet not a man. Now, I give you life. Give her the pills, you little fool. No one will know it. And then I'll go away. I'll let you all alone. Give her the pills and I'll leave you. You will? Yes. Yes, I will. Give her the easy death, little man. Hurry. <gasps> yes. Why not? Well, she is to blame that you're here. She did it, did it at, that, at that crazy party. And how or why, I don't understand, but, but she did it. Well, why should I die? Why yes, I? yes. Why should you die? Go, make her sleep, and you'll be free of me forever. Yes, I'll do it. I'll do it. What did she say, Sam? What did she say? I, uh, uh, I... Speak, you fool, speak. You talked so long with her, I couldn't hear a single word. What did she say? Staring at me. Look at her. Still staring at me. Samuel, you've got to tell me. What did she say? You, uh, uh, you should go to sleep. Sleep? What are you saying? Yes, that's what she said. If, if you go to sleep, she, she said she'll disappear. Uh, go back where she came from. Just sleep. Sleep? Yes, I'll get your pills. I'll get your pills. Old thing, sitting there. Staring at me? Who are you? Where did you come from? The dead don't live. And yet, you're dead. I know you are. Come closer. Come closer? 
I think she said, come closer. Come closer. I, I've got to do it. Closer. What? What do you want of me? What? Quickly, listen to me. If you listen, I'll give you life and go away. Hear me? Go away. Yes, yes, I listen. He wants to poison you. <gasps> he thinks I'll give him life if first he kills you. Oh, no, he wouldn't. Not he. Look, there in the corner, he mixes up a poison brew. Those sleeping pills you use, he fixes them, all of them. No. Listen, listen closely. He'll take a glass and give you one, the poisoned one. Switch the glasses. Give him the poisoned one. But Do as I say and you'll have life. Kill him for me and I'll give you life. You hear me? Give you life. Life, life, yes, yes. I'll do it. I'll do it. Go back. He is ready for you. Yes. Here, my dear, this will make you sleep. See, I, I've mixed one for myself, too. Yes, yes, I see. Here, uh, this is yours. The pill is in the water? Yes, uh, the usual one. Here, I I'll drink with you. There's one in my glass, too. Sleep. We'll sleep until it's day. And then that horrible old woman, she'll be gone. Look, she's standing up. Yeah, where? No, she's still sitting there as she's been for hours. You, you moved the glasses. No, no, they're just the way they were. This one is mine? Yes, yes, that one is yours. Uh, drink. Yes, and you drink yours. Mm, together. Ah. <laughs> mm. mm. <sighs> Everything will be fine now. Fine. Yes. All my life has been run for me. First my mother and then you ran it. What are you talking about? And now for the first time my life is going to be my own. You hear me? My own. I'll do what I want, when I want, and, and, uh, and no one. Uh, no one, oh, my head. Ugh. Sam? Old woman, you see? I did it, he's, he's gone. Now, now you've got to go away. You said you'd go away. Yes, yes, I, I said I'd go away. Why? Why are you coming toward me? The, the other way, out, out where you came from. Yes, soon I'll go. See, he's lying here. I did just what you said I should. Don't look at me like that. He's dead. Yes. And we're alone. What? Alone, me and you, and the blood in your veins. What, what? While he lived. I couldn't touch you, but now he's dead. Stop looking at me like that. But now he's dead and we're alone. I tell you, stop looking at me like that. What do you want of me? What do you want of me? What I need to bring me back to life. The thick red liquid of life in your veins to fill the emptiness of my <laughs> Mm, red life. I'll drink it. No, vampire, you. No, no.
Lights Out, written especially for radio by Arch Obler, comes to you each Wednesday from our Chicago studios. This episode of Lights Out featured Evie Morris as Mrs. Hinkle and Mark Seven as Mr. Hinkle. Jimmy was played by Nathan Jarose, and Ellen was played by Emily Bishop Basu. Cheryl McDonald played the old woman, and Matthew J. Wilkes played Jeffries and the life of the party. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to the new Old Time Radio Show. This podcast is available through Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever else you may choose to listen in. So make sure to tell two or three hundred of your closest personal friends. Leave a review, like us on Facebook, or click on our donate button at curtainsmysterytheater.com or anchor.fm slash the new old time radio show. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in two weeks when the new old time radio show brings you... Adventures of Philip Marlowe, Red Wind.